Good morning, Cornerstone. I am thrilled to be here this morning to share with you. My mission with Wycliffe Bible Translators is to serve as a team leader for the volunteer and intern placement team, which means I manage a group of nine people tasked with sending volunteers and interns who serve for two months to two years and bring help to Bible translators all over the world. Over the past few months, I have processed and trained 20 of the 55 volunteers and interns sent by my team. We currently have folks in Nigeria, Cameroon, Mexico, East Asia, Papua New Guinea, Romania, the Solomon Islands, two countries in the Middle East, and two countries in Southeast Asia. A few months ago, I was recognized by Wycliffe for my 15 years of service. The word Wycliffe gives for 15 years is gratitude, and I am here this morning to say thank you to you, Cornerstone, for journeying with me the entire 15 years. But my journey really started more than 15 years ago as a young child through my parents, Sunday school teachers, pastors, and in college, Greg Baker and Pastor Billy, all who taught me about God and the importance of sharing my faith. I don't know of anyone else who shares their faith more than Greg or Pastor Billy, pretty much with every single person they meet. Um, they will talk about the Lord. Since this is my 15th year with Wycliffe, I wanted to share four brief snapshots from the primary roles that I've had during that time. First, picture this. A 15-hour plane ride, an eight-hour train, four-hour bus through the winding foothills of the massive Himalayan mountain range, and then a one-hour hike down dirt paths and along terraced fields to a remote village in the mountains of South Asia. This is where my colleague and I spent two years, sometimes by candlelight or without running water, working to get God's word in the form of oral stories crafted and recorded for the Kahani people. While there were many believers who heard Bible stories for the very first time during that project, just a month ago when I messaged a colleague in that area to find out how the work is going now, she told me that our grand vision of small groups of people telling stories and becoming churches and spreading throughout the area is not exactly happening. She said, we are trusting the Holy Spirit that the work has not been in vain. For one thing, we have implemented lessons learned from your project to work in other areas, and there has been success there. The area you serve in is so difficult. A neighboring district is only just now seeing fruit after a mission team has spent 20 years there praying. Now picture two college-age girls eager to find out how they might serve the Lord with their lives. Gathering in someone's living room in the middle of Wisconsin, they listen to a Wycliffe missionary tell stories of God's work. They commit to a two-year assignment. They join Wycliffe full-time. They get married to South Asian men, have children, and are currently living in South Asia doing storying work full-time. These two girls are just two of the several hundred people who heard me speak at colleges, universities, and small groups around the USA and in two countries in the Pacific as part of a recruiting tour on behalf of Wycliffe's Bible storing work, which was another role that I served in. Third, imagine being a young South Asian man or woman who loves the Lord and wants to share the gospel with neighboring people groups, but there's not yet scripture in that language. Imagine a team of Bible story trainers, including a young woman named Elizabeth, come to teach you. And I'll add that when my cousin, Roberta Watts, came to visit, she actually played a key role in training this young man who's pictured, uh, whose name, who we call Abraham as well. And I recently received this report from a colleague. Storying projects are going on in many, many languages. Many of the consultants in training that you train, including Abraham, are able to lead workshops completely on their own. Lastly, imagine being a retired teacher or business professional who wants to give some of their time to serve God among Bibleist people groups. Imagine being interviewed on points of your faith, your family background, as well as difficult confidential struggles, and then submitting yourself to cross-cultural trainings in preparation for service. Or imagine yourself as a Bible translation team overseas desperately in need of someone to come and help complete a specific task, maybe related to a computer program or a literacy project. My role now has me interact with dozens of people on this side of the ocean, figuring out how and where God might call them to serve, and 
it has me interact with several international missionaries on the other side of the world, figuring out how to get much needed help to them. So that's just a little bit of my professional life over the past 15 years. And as far as um, my personal life, I am married to Jason, who is here with me, and we have a two-year-old daughter named Lily. And as many of you prayed for us last summer, you may remember that one year ago today, at 3 a.m., I gave birth to a little girl who had been growing inside of me for only 22 weeks and whose heart was no longer beating. We named her Promise and were able to hold her for several hours before saying goodbye. We definitely still miss her. Yet by God's grace, I am here today pregnant with another little girl due at the end of September. I just wanted to say a special thank you to Cornerstone for your prayers, especially during that time. It meant so much to my family. And by his grace and your continued prayers and financial gift, he has allowed to serve me in my role at Wycliffe Bible Translators. Your continued faithfulness in giving generously to the work that God has called me to is of immeasurable worth and value in God's kingdom. If anyone has more questions about Bible translation or would like to talk with me, I'll be in the lobby after the service. Thank you very much. <laughs>